Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite brings you Bob Hope in Death as a Shadow, a suspense play produced and directed by Anton M. Leder. And now, Autolite presents Bob Hope in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Don't ever answer a telephone just because you've got nothing else to do. Just because you're curious. I was sitting in my big red leather swivel chair, my feet on the largest mahogany desk money could buy, a bottle of the best scotch balanced between my special custom-built shoes. Everything the best. That's the way I like to operate. The gold lettering across my office window spelling out Harvey Warren, counselor at law. I liked it that way. It had dignity. Yeah, I had everything. I had a house that rambled for 14 rooms. I built that house for Lily. Lily. She was beautiful. From the top of her auburn hair to the tip of her pretty little toes. Yeah, I had it all. I had everything. Till the day my Lily was murdered. That's why I couldn't stand being home anymore. I could smell her cologne in every room, a touch of it on every chair. That's why I was at the office that night, with nobody but the bottle to keep me company. And that was the call I should have never answered. But at night, eight stories up in an empty office building, that ringing sounded urgent. Like it was the most important thing in my lonely little world. Hello? Warren. Who's this? Oh. Yes, Bolster. No name, stupid. What are you doing at your office this time of night? What do you want? Have you got it? Well, sure I've got it. It's all ready for mailing. I'll drop it off when I leave. Don't bother. I'm going to pick it up tonight. But I told you I'd mail it. I changed my mind. I'm coming over. I'll be there at 10 o'clock. Oh, I, I can't make it tonight. I'm leaving. I'm just going out. You'll make it all right. Yeah, but why all of a sudden... Tonight, Warren. 10 o'clock. And, Warren, don't try it. What are you talking about? Why should I try anything? What could I try? Uh, you could be cute enough to figure out something. You're that kind of a guy. So, don't try anything. Something must have gone wrong. All I was supposed to do was mail him his money. What got into him? Why would he want to come to my office now, at night, when the building was empty? Couldn't be just the money. He was coming for something else. Something else. But what? Police Department, Jonesy. Get me homicide. Now, hold on. He wants homicide, extension 458. Hello? Homicide? This is homicide. Is Joe there, Lieutenant Joe Scarponi? Who's calling? Harvey Warren. Oh, hello, Mr. Warren. Hope you've been feeling better. Oh, thanks, Mike. I don't have much time. Would you get me Joe? Well, he ain't here, Mr. Warren. Well, where is he? I don't know. I've got to get to him. Something wrong? You've got to locate him, Mike. Well, I've got a whole police department, Mr. Warren. Just say the word. What's wrong? Only Joe. He's the only one that can help me. Well, he may be calling in. Then tell him to call me at my office, will you? Don't make any mistake, Mike. I'm at my office. I couldn't get it out of my mind. What had made Bolster switch like that? What had gone wrong? Must have figured it out and was coming over for just one thing. To kill me. Lion Apartments. Lieutenant Joe Scarponi, please. Uh, one moment. He doesn't answer. Well, where can I reach him? He must have left some kind of a message. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. He hasn't been in all evening. Well, tell him to call Harvey Warren. Uh, yes, Mr. Warren. At my office, understand? Uh, does he have your number, sir? He's got my number. Don't make any mistakes. In my office. He's got to reach me before 10 o'clock. That's tonight, understand? I'll tell him, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Madge. I've got to try Madge. He's got to be at Madge's place. I should have thought of it before. Busy. That must be Joe. He's got to be there. That's Joe trying to get me. I've got to wait. 
have to give him a chance to get through. Why doesn't it ring? Why doesn't he call? Can't wait. Six, nine, four. Hello? Madge, baby? Oh, hello, Warren. What's this sudden devotion? Oh, Madge, let me talk to Joe, and don't tell me he's not there. Well, of course he's not here, Warren. What's the matter with you? Madge, I gotta find him. Well, I am expecting him. When? Soon. Don't give me double talk, Madge. When? We've got a date, ten o'clock. Ten o'clock? That's too late, Madge. What's the matter, Warren? Well, where can I reach him? Where can I find Joe? Well, did you try his hotel? He's not there. Well, call homicide. He's nowhere, Madge. What's wrong, Warren? There's no time to explain. Help me find him, please. Well, I'll do what I can. At my office. Don't forget it. My office. Before ten. I kept on calling. Everywhere. Every bar he'd ever had a drink. His favorite restaurants. Even the Turkish bath where he played handball and got his rub down. Joe was nowhere. I looked at my watch. It said 9.31. The clock on the wall showed 9.35. Now I wasn't even sure of the time. I couldn't afford to be wrong about the time. At the tone, the time will be 9.35 and 10 seconds. The clock on the wall was right. There wasn't much time. Even if I get a hold of Joe, it'd be too late. My mind was starting to play tricks. Starting to tie my insides up in a hundred little knots. Suppose Bolster got here early. Suppose he got here before 10 and no Joe. I got up in a panic. My shirt was soaked wet to my back. I could run, yeah. I could get away while it was still time. But then Bolster would really know something was wrong. Maybe he wasn't going to kill me. Maybe he was just coming for his money. I had to get rid of the hysteria. Had to get a hold of myself. No use playing guessing games. I opened the door. I was going to leave. I wasn't going to be a sitting duck for a guy like Bolster. At that time of night, just one elevator was in use. It was directly opposite my office door. The indicator over the door flashed numbers when the car was running. I went to press the button to signal for the night man. Before I could press it, the car started up. Somebody was coming up. I wanted to run. I didn't know where. I was on the top floor. My eyes went to the ceiling. Down the end of the hallway, there was a spiral ladder that led into a trap up through the ceiling. It must have been the opening of the roof. I started to run for it. I stopped. Silly. When all the time there was a stairway going down. I ran for the exit sign and ducked into the stairway. Down one flight and I smacked right into it. A steel gate spread like an accordion across the bottom landing. The gate they always fastened in place at nine o'clock. Trapped. I was trapped. And then I just stood there. Everything quiet. What happened to the elevator? Then I heard the door open. Downstairs, right below. It didn't come up to the eighth. It was the night man letting off the cleaning woman. I walked back up the steps. The light on the indicator showed the fifth floor. Then the indicator started flashing again. It was going down. Now was my time to signal the night man while he was still in the car. Before I had a chance, the telephone began to ring. It was coming from my office. Keep ringing, Joe. I'm coming. Just don't stop ringing. Hello. Hello, Joe. Oh, oh, ain't this Gladstone 2707? That's right. Are you calling well, for... give me Sammy. Who? I want to talk to Sammy. Oh, right number, girly. Wrong party. I looked at the clock. It was no use. Too late. Even if he did call, I started to go. I saw the bottle on the table. I had to take another drink. I felt a little better. Now I have to get out. Hello. Hello. It's me again. Look, girlie, there's no Sammy at this number. I know, but you sounded kind of lonely. I'm lonely, too. Forget it, will you? Don't tie up my phone, understand? Sure, I know. You waiting for a call, too? Get off my number. I don't want this phone tied up. Sure, sure, I understand. But just in case, why don't you take my phone? I started to go and wasn't going to stop. Not for anything. And I realized it might be too late. Suppose he was on his way up. Suppose he was watching the entrance. Why did that girl call back? What did she want? Then I knew it was a trick. A typical hoodlum trick. Bolster was using that girl to check up on me. Playing at cat and mouse. His way of holding me to the phone. Making sure while he was on his way up. A trick. Twenty minutes to ten. The clock kept staring at me. The minute hand beating its way around a circle. Twenty minutes to ten. 
That girl again, checking up on me. Who did Bolster think he was kidding? He knew I had to answer that phone. Hello. Warren? Joe, you don't know how I've been trying to get you all night. Yeah, I know. Your line's been busy. Oh, come right over, Joe. Well, what's the matter? Well, there's no time to talk. Just get here. Oh, well, I got a date, Warren. It's on my only night off. You know how mad she is. Joe, this is a matter of life and death. Whose life? My life. Oh, well, I'll be right there. Before 10, Joe. It's got to be before 10. My eyes were drawn to the clock again. I watched the minute hand cutting down the time. If Joe came with a squad car, he'd be here in a matter of minutes. But it was his night off. Maybe he wouldn't be able to get a cab. I took another drink just for luck. I opened the door and listened for the elevator. It didn't take long. I went into the hallway. The light on the indicator was flashing. Two, three, four. Maybe it wasn't Joe. Maybe it was Bolster. How was I to know? I ducked into the stairway landing, watching. Joe! What? Warren, are you nuts? Oh, I've never been so glad to see you, to see anybody. You know better than that, coming up from behind a guy. Say, you look terrible. What's wrong? Well? Don't close the door, Joe. Why? When he comes, we can hear the elevator. Okay. Now, what's it all about? He's due here at 10 o'clock. He's a killer. Who is a killer? I have to start from the beginning. You don't have much time. But you won't understand unless I explain. Okay, but don't start dramatizing. It's a quarter to 10. Well, we have to start with the day Lily was murdered. Remember I called you? And when you came, you found me sitting in the bedroom looking at her? Her head hanging almost to the floor... The rest of her doubled up in the bed. Her auburn hair gently suspended like someone spun fine silk around where the bullet went through that lovely head. She was so beautiful. I was sitting there looking at her. And the sounds tumbling around my head. The photographers, the newspapermen, flashbulbs, all like a bad dream. Look, can't you take the hair away from her face? I'll cut your head off if you touch that body. Let's see the gun. Show him the gun, Mike. It's a gun. What's there to see? Oh, we understand it's Warren's gun. You understand nothing until it's official. The coroner said it happened this morning about four hours ago. Now, how about that, Lieutenant Scarpone? Then quote him. Don't ask me. Mike. Yeah? They had enough. Get him out of here. Oh, wait a minute. Not so fast. I want one more shot of Warren. Uh, put that drink back in your hand, Mr. Warren, please. Now, look, fella. Don't overdo it. Uh, this is no private affair, Lieutenant Scarponi. Why don't you lay off? Well, put the drink back in his hand. Take it the way he is and get out. We'd like to do it the way it happened. He had a drink in his hand. It wouldn't look so good, Lieutenant, if the paper said you were covering up for a lifelong friend. Mike, get him out of here. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, this is some mess, Warren. Yeah. How did it happen? Oh, I loved her, Joe. You knew how I loved her. More than anything in the world. Now look at her. Yeah. You know we've been fighting. Last night was the worst that ever happened. So I ran out of the house. What time? Well, right after dinner. I went down to the Silver Grill and had a couple. You can check on that. Uh -huh. Then the Biltmore and had a few more. And I remember calling a cab on 7th and Hill. And then, so help me, Joe, that's all I remember. What do you mean, that's all you remember? Well, that's all. I drew a blank. We've known each other all our lives, Joe. Did you ever know me to black out? No, that's not like you, Warren. But that's what happened. I don't remember anything. Until when? Until I woke up and called you. And where did you wake up? Right here, in the bedroom. In bed? No, in this chair, just like I am now. I saw Lily... Just like she is now. Blood on the floor. I know she's done for. My beautiful Lily. Then I get up to get a bottle. And I sit down again in this chair. I take one good long drink. I reach for the phone on the night table. I call you. I've been sitting here since. With a bottle. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, the gun. Is it yours, Warren? You know that gun is mine. It was on the floor. It's the gun that killed him. Joe, do you think I did it? Well, I don't have to tell you how it looks. I know how it looks. What I want to know is, do you think I did it? I'll have to book you, Warren. Oh, I couldn't have killed her, Joe. You know I couldn't. I loved her too much. I couldn't have killed her, Joe. Before we get to trial, Warren, for your own good, you'd uh, better start remembering. Seems like a long time ago, Joe. I just couldn't remember what I'd been doing there in the bedroom after Lily was murdered. Couldn't even remember how I got there. But two minutes ago, you were scared to death. You were trying to reach me every place in town while I'm here. Do you remember that day in the courtroom? What's that got to do with the killer who's on his way up here? Quite a bit, Joe. That's what I'm coming to. But before he comes, you've got to know the whole story. I know the whole story. Not quite. Think back to that day in court, Joe. You remember how bad it looked for me? All the newspapers were sure I was done for because I couldn't remember where I was when she was killed and I knew I was somewhere else when it happened. But all the evidence piled against me. Everybody's sure I was a dead duck. You and Madge in court at my side and the prosecuting attorney pressing the jury for the full penalty. And the only defense offered by the accused is that he doesn't remember. He pleads not guilty, claiming temporary insanity. Forgetfulness as so conveniently happening to the accused cannot be construed as insanity. The state must therefore ask that the full penalty according to the law... Match. Oh, yeah, get me some water. Hey, pass out. The poor man, he just couldn't take it. That this court will keep order. Order. You all right now, Warren? You feel better? Joe. I... I didn't do it. Yeah, sure, sure. Joe, I remember now. I remember. I didn't do it. I was out of town when it happened. I was out of town. I was out of town when Lily was murdered, Joe. And we proved it, remember? And I was acquitted. Like a bad dream, wasn't it? Look, for the last time, Warren, is this what you call me up to your office for? What's this got to do with somebody coming over here to kill you? Yeah, like a bad dream. Okay, Warren, I've got a date with Madge. Oh, no, Joe, you've got a date with the killer. Then who is the killer? I'll never forget that day they acquitted me. I walked out of court a free man. I know you weren't guilty. Your alibi proved you weren't guilty. I know all that. Yes, Joe, but you don't know. I was guilty. What? What did you say? I was guilty. Oh, you're losing your mind, Warren. You're nuts. If I'm nuts, what does that make you? Makes sense, Warren. Lily thought I was nuts, too. Smart little woman thinking she could make a sucker out of me. She was going to leave me, take half of all I had. That's what she thought. How did you kill Lily that morning when you were in Glendale? I know you were in Glendale because your alibi proved it. It was Lily who gave me the idea how to do it. You know how beautiful she was? Every Thursday, the maid's day off, she stayed in bed, slept the clock around, taking care of her looks. I began figuring. Lily all day alone, Lily in bed. All I had to do was hire somebody to kill her while I was out of town. Then the guy coming up here... That's right, is the killer. A three-time loser and very tough. I gave him my gun to do it with him. That's all there was to it. He's the man you want, Joe. He's on his way up here to kill me. Instead of doing that, you'll arrest him and clear your books on the Lily case. So, this is why it was so important for me to get here, huh? Well, you have to admit it was neat. Getting myself pinched, faking the blackout, stacking the evidence against myself, and forcing you to bring me to trial. I never had a blackout in my life. But it got me off... Great law, that double jeopardy. Puts you on the spot, though, doesn't it, Joe? You know I'm guilty, but there's nothing you can do about it. The law says I can't be tried twice for the same crime. You see, Joe, I happen to be one of those lawyers who knows his law. Yeah. You've always been at the head of the class. Never worked too hard to get there. Just by looking over the next guy's shoulder and using him was the smart way. Huh? Yeah, Kitty, very neat. I knew you'd be a good sport about it. Maybe I'm just another dumb cop to you. Well, I don't like anybody making a sucker out of me. Especially a guy who's supposed to be my good friend. Where are you going? You got a date with this killer who's due here any minute. Well, I got a date with my girl. Good night, Warren. We're both going to keep our dates. Well, Joe, what are you trying to do? You're a cop. You've got to pick him up. He's a killer, Joe. I can pick him up after 10 o'clock, can't I? Oh, you can't leave me, Joe. You can't leave me here alone. I don't like your company. 
Oh, he's going to kill me, Joe. He's going to kill you. Now, why should he do that to a guy who pays so well for what he buys? Well, I'm the only one who knows he fired that gun. Are you gentlemen all through for the night? Yeah, I'm all through. He's going to stay. I'm going down. Well, step in. Stay where you are, Warren. You can't leave me. Let go of my arm. Joe! Close the door, mister. I said close the door. Joe, he's going to kill me. Joe! Hello, Warren. What? Bolster. It was Bolster standing there and leering at me. Joe, he's here! Joe! Shut up! Now don't do that again. Well, where did you come from? Well, you don't think I'd ever use a front door, do you? They build these places with fire escapes, you know. Now, uh, into your office. I started walking. I had to do something. Him right behind. Then I made a break for it, into the office. Then I saw the butt of his gun smash through the window. And then Bolster's hand reached through and unlocked the door. Oh, you're pretty cute. Bolster, you're not going to do anything. You want your money. Don't you want your money? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the money comes first. Well, it's in... In one of these drawers. You know, you told me to do it with your gun. I don't remember which drawer. I couldn't figure it out why a guy should want me to plant his gun. That's strange. I was sure. Warren, where's the money? Not, I'm trying to find it. Don't stall. It was a white envelope. You know, I didn't figure until you went to trial and they acquitted you. That's when I began to worry. So many white envelopes. But I still wasn't sure until tonight when I got here, when I see what you've been up to. Find that dough. I'm trying. I misplaced it. And then, then it hit me. You was free and I was liable. No more tricks. It should be. Find that dough. Here. Here it is. On a desk. Lay it down. There. Now, turn around. Oh, don't you want to see if, if it's all here? Turn around. And like a dumb six-year-old kid, I turned around. It was the funniest sensation, hearing the shot, feeling the panic, but nothing happened. I turned around. Bolster's eyes started to roll. His mouth opened like he had something to say, and then he dropped. No, it didn't happen to you, Warren. Joe. The elevator opposite your door and the broken window, you can thank them both. What? <laughs> You're a very funny guy, Joe. That's some game you played. Is he dead? He's dead. Hey, what are these for? I'm holding you for murder. Murder? How can you be so dumb? I was acquitted, remember? You can't try me again. I'm talking about this murder. Are you crazy? I didn't shoot Bolster. I didn't even have a gun. I thought you were one lawyer who happened to know all about the law. Or didn't you know that it makes no difference who shot him? The two of you were committing a felony. And the law says all accessories to a felony are equally responsible for all acts resulting from the felony. Unquote. But, Joe... Including homicide, Warren, including homicide. I don't know all about the law like you, Mr. Harvey Warren. I only know just enough to get by. Let's go. Joe, wait a minute. Joe, I think I'm going to faint. I... I'm going to black out, Joe. Wait. You see, I don't remember a thing, Joe. So help me, Joe. I don't remember. Bob Hope will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Sorrowful Jones. Tonight's suspense play was written by Joe Pagano with music composed by Lucian Morawake and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader.